everyone, what's going on? Joey here, and on today's episode, we're gonna reveal who's under the mask of the Rottweiler here on The Mask Singer, going through all the clues and the pitch correct audio. Now, before we do, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and make sure you do it because really, Nala, she loves the subscribers. Say hi, say thank you, thank you, no, no? Anyway, let's get started. So for those who are new to the YouTube channel, hi, how are you? My name is Joey Contino. I'm an executive audio producer here in beautiful New York City, where luckily today is not as cold. But it's my job as an executive audio producer. It's to go out into the world, find audio, and deliver it out to our clients. And when that audio doesn't sound good, it's also my job to make it sound good, whether that is pitch correcting something. Maybe it's slowing something down. Maybe it's taking out an EQ on top. Maybe it's taking out a little bit of buzz on the bottom. But for those who don't know, every single week, The Masked Singer gives us these clue videos where the celebrity talks about themselves and gives us clues about their lives. But Fox is smart. They said, uh, we can't let the real celebrity talk because if we do, people are gonna recognize their voice. So what do they do? They pitch it up and they speed it up and that way you have no idea who it is. But me doing what I do, I said, huh, I could slow that down, I can pitch correct it, and then that way we can hear the real celebrity voice. Now that, plus the clues, we could determine who's under the mask. And right now we're gonna go through who's under the mask of the Rottweiler. Now we're gonna go ahead and go through the clues first, then the pitch correct audio, and then we'll go to my guess. So I wrote down all the clues. I don't know if you're like me. I wrote down all my clues here on my computer. And um, pretty much it's kind of like a, we we'll write them down and we figure out the answers later on. Um, this is all the clues that they gave us so far from the sneak peek all the way through episode seven. The clues were the Rottweiler says, I'm here to be best in show. I'm gonna work my tail off to earn your puppy love. Next, the Rottweiler says, roses are blue, violets are red, but do you have a clue who's under this doggy head? Then from episode one, he mentions pigskin under the Friday Night Lights, which could refer to either someone being a football player or an actor who plays a football player. Uh, he has a fantasy championship ring on, meaning that he probably doesn't play football, but he actually plays fantasy football. Um, there was an insert shot of blue roses, and then he says that he chose the Rottweiler because he was bitten by one as a child. Then the next clues that we had were from episode five. We had a big jump there. He had a first place ribbon. He said he's capable of succeeding on his own and he wants it that way. Uh, then there was a doggy bed with other doggy beds around it with the words Carolina, Kale, and Little Pete. Then the Rottweiler drew a picture of himself as an angel. Then he says, you can say it all started because of musical theater and makeup. And the next clues are from the last episode, episode seven. We see him wearing a gold Rolex. He says, I didn't take the conventional route to stardom. And we see him with a vacuum cleaner. He held up a mini flag from the state of North Carolina. He says he wouldn't have changed going through hard times early in life because it has led him to every real opportunity he's had on and off the screen. And then he did that walking next to a crime scene of an outline of a body. And his last clue was a physical clue, which was in drawing of Trump the insult comic dog because he was a guest judge that week. Now, before we get into answering these clues, we're gonna play the audio that Fox gave us and then our pitch correct audio. So here's the audio Fox gave us. When I started this competition, I never would have imagined I'd make it this far. Hearing all the love for these past few weeks has made me feel so grateful. Now here's my pitch correct audio. When I started this competition, I never would have imagined I'd make it this far. Hearing all the love for these past few weeks has made me feel so grateful. Let me tell you, the story of my life didn't always look like this. I didn't take the conventional route to stardom. And while there were tough times, I wouldn't change a single moment because it's led me to every opportunity I've had on screen and off. Tonight, I'm leaving my heart on the stage and showing a side of myself I don't normally share because I'm not ready to take this mask off anytime soon. Now, do you have any guesses on who that could be? Mm -hmm. I think it's Chris Daughtry and here's why. Let's go through all the clues. So we're gonna start from the very top of the list and go through all the clues once again. The first clue we had, roses are blue, violets are red, which by the way, are really hard to say because you are saying roses are red, violets are blue, but it's a clue. So he said, roses are blue, violets are red, but do you have any clue who's behind this doggy's head? And well, he has a daughter named Rose and he has a tattoo of a blue rose on his arm. Here, that's what it looks like. 
Then in episode one, he mentions the pigskin under the Friday Night Lights and then showed like a championship ring, but it said fantasy on it. Well, for those who don't know, he played football in high school until the age of 14, where he said he was fast, but he realized he really sucked at it. But what's really good about it is that he put down the football and that kind of gave him the inspiration to pick up a guitar. So it got him into music. Uh, the next clue was a shot of Blue Roses again. His daughter's name is Rose. He has a Blue Rose tattoo. He says he chose the Rottweiler because he was bitten by one as a kid. Well, he was. There's not really much to explain there. Episode 5, we saw the first place ribbon, which was interesting because he didn't win first place on American Idol. He won fourth place. So I think maybe this is symbolic that he's never won. Then there was a picture that he drew of himself as an angel. For those who don't know, he's a comic book illustrator. He loves to draw. Uh, then he says, you could say that all started thanks to musical theater and makeup. After he left football, he went into musical theater at his high school. So there you go. Then the next clues came from episode seven, him wearing a Rolex, uh, which he has a Rolex. I mean, that one's really, not really a clue, but um, then he says he didn't take the conventional route to stardom. There's actually a really interesting story here because after he left high school and then a few years into his 20s, he started a band called Absent Element and they were very poor. So what did he do? They cleaned houses. They cleaned houses to make money so that they could tour. I, I, I think it's kind of cool. And then of course, uh, on American Idol, he won fourth place, but he still got a record deal. I mean, that's unheard of. Normally first place gets the record deal, maybe second, but not fourth. But of course, you know his name is a household name, so he got stardom from a very interesting route, but he definitely got it. Then he held up a miniature North Carolina flag. Well, he's from originally born and raised in Leicester, North Carolina. Then he said he wouldn't have changed going through hard times early in life because it led him to real opportunities on and off the screen and then had him walking past a crime scene. For those who don't know, he made many cameos in CSI New York as Mac Taylor, FBI. That's not FBI, that's CSI. Crazy Joey. And then the last clue was a drawing of Triumph. And as we know, he's a comic book illustrator. So that's all the clues. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Uh, feel free to write in the comment section below or you can write to me on Instagram at Joey Contino. I like to respond to every single person. So if I don't get to you, I apologize. There are a lot of comments in some of these, but I, I figured I would go ahead and leave you guys with all the rest of the pitch correct audio. So here they are. Last performance, I let my guard down and sang from the heart. But let's be real, I'm used to my voice winning over the ladies. What's up, Nicole? After I put on a good show, I always like to break bread with the homies. And this is how we do it. Feel free to snoop into my life. You'd see that my pops taught me how to serenade the ladies, and I hadn't stopped since. So, Nicole Majig, tonight this song's for you. And I ain't too proud to beg. Rehearsing for my last performance, there was an accident, and I suffered an electric shock that nearly knocked me out. All my insecurities about performing resurfaced. But I couldn't let that setback stand in my way. Becoming the butterfly has reignited a love I've had since I was seven years old. I found others modeled just like me and was welcomed into the choir's joyful noise. It made me feel safe even in the hardest times. This bleeding love has given me the highest of highs, but sadly led to the lowest of lows. As the butterfly, I am taking charge and reclaiming what I thought I'd lost because this is what I was meant to do. Performing under this mask has been so liberating. Like I have nothing to lose. I haven't felt this free since I was a young cop on the road, jamming with my pack of misfits and discovering who I really was. Being in this competition makes me feel like I did in the old days. People say that a leopard can't change their spots, but that's just not true. I'm a fresh new edition of the old me. Tonight, I'm reliving my teenage dream by performing like no one is watching, free as can be. After my last performance, I realized that being the flamingo is one of the greatest opportunities of my life. Mira, the real truth is, my story's not all fantasy. See, years ago, I started hating the sound of my own voice. And being on stage became one of my biggest fears. But now as the flamingo, when I hear I've done a good job, I'm relearning how to say thank you. And I'm reminded that I can do it all. 
I've danced, sung, and acted my way to the top, so tonight, it's going to just be me and my voice. And I'm finally okay with that. Thank you for helping me see that this bird is anything but basic. Getting this far against so many great singers has been one of the most gratifying experiences I've ever had. But I will say, the hardest part of this whole funky thing is learning to stand on my own two purple stumps for the first time. And let me tell you, I work really well with others. So when I put on this mask, it was like I'd been beamed up into another dimension. Where I'm alone, like the new girl at school. Ooh, maybe I'll hang out with those strangers with candy. Tonight, it's all about showing the judges and myself that there are no more excuses. And that this tree can stand tall. As a young bud, I couldn't have imagined I'd ever be a competitor in something like this. Being on a stage was always my dream, girls. But I was shy about showing my talent. I'm still an introvert, and on my days off, I love when it's oh so quiet. Nothing makes me happier than kicking off my shoes and lying in rapture in my own secret garden. But listen up, sweethearts. When the spotlight calls, this shy petal knows how to bloom. So tonight, I'm gonna throw the panel off my scent. Because nobody's gonna pick me out of this competition, boo-boo. I will survive. The love I've received these past few weeks has let a whole new side of myself shine. I'm always dreaming about entertaining people on tour. In my 30-year career, I've accomplished many things in pursuit of this dream. I've won multiple awards and become a household name. But I'm mostly known for being part of a pack of talented fellas. Not my voice alone. So tonight, with this mask on, I'm gonna prove that I'm a superhero all by myself. Because this fox is one in a million. When I started this competition, I never would have imagined I'd make it this far. Hearing all the love for these past few weeks has made me feel so grateful. Let me tell you, the story of my life didn't always look like this. I didn't take the conventional route to stardom. And while there were tough times, I wouldn't change a single moment because it's led me to every opportunity I've had, on screen and off. Tonight, I'm leaving my heart on the stage and showing a side of myself I don't normally share, because I'm not ready to take this mask off anytime soon. So there you guys go once again. Thank you again for joining me if you haven't done so yet. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Remember, Nala's counting on you, right Nala? She ran away. She doesn't like me sometimes. But I'd like to leave you guys with a question. My question for you guys is, what are your pet's names? I want to know what your pet's name. Do you have any goofy names? My cat's name is Nala. My wife picked it. She loved the Lion King. So um, write that below. But thank you for joining me once again. Hope you have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.